Deputy Assistant to the President, Sebastian Gorka, joins us now. Mr. Gorka, thanks very much for being with us. Um, I want to ask you about a number of things. The President's trip to France was very important, also uh, the victory in Iraq and Mosul. I do want to start off with what Dan and others are reporting. The, the President has had four days now without an event on his public schedule. Uh, you've heard the reporting that there's a bunker mode in parts of the White House since the news of Donald Trump Jr. broke. I want you to be able to comment on that. Oh, absolutely. It's laughable. Uh, your Chiron talked about a crisis. Your reporter talked about a bunker mentality. I actually work in the West Wing. I work in the White House. It is absolutely nothing of the kind. Uh, we are pushing the Make America Great Again agenda. The president is a steam locomotive that will not be stopped. It's just fake news. I I'm sad to see CNN fall to this. I know you want salacious, sensational coverage for your ratings so your corporate sponsors and owners will have you know, more money. But that's, that's not media. That's not reportage. It's just fake news. Okay. I I'm just going to ignore the insults because I don't think it really gets us anywhere. Again. It's not about you. It's about actually having journalism back on TV. Okay. Now, wh where are the Walter Cron Cronkites of, of yesteryear? This is just about ratings and money. and It's, it's, it's actually quite sad. So the president tweeted today, when you hear the words sources say from the fake media, oftentimes those sources are made up and do not exist. I'm wondering how the president can actually make that claim when all the reporting by the New York Times and the meeting his son held with a Russian attorney had been proven by his son's own emails, which he only released after the Times was going to publish the contents of them. Is that the same way that all the unnamed sources said that uh, Director Comey, including CNN, was going to completely uh, gain say everything the president said about their meeting 24 hours before his testimony. Right, that was reported. And that which, was reporting was and wrong, CNN... and we corrected ourselves. Uh, unlike the right. White House, which has never corrected itself on anything. But I'm giving you an opportunity right now to correct what the president said this morning, because what he's alleging is that the reporting is fake, and in fact, his son's own email chain shows that it's accurate. Do you deny that? No, I, I, I deny the fact that there's anything here that's untoward. This is, again, this okay. is an obsessive so, nine-month okay, you do not deny you do not deny that all the sourcing for the New York Times was correct on the story, and the president is wrong when he's saying the anonymous sourcing is fake news. Oh, I stand by what the president said, and I stand by what his son said. We are incredibly impressed by uh, Don Jr.'s transparency and the fact that he actually published these emails and said he will right, but cooperate let's, let's, with, let's, anybody, let's, with anybody. Let's, let's be honest here, though. He only published these emails because the New York Times got the emails and was going to publish them, and then he smartly got ahead of it. And the only reason that this story has lasted so long is because he wasn't transparent from the beginning. Even Trey Gowdy today said, and I quote, if you had a contact with Russia, tell the special counsel about it. Don't wait for the New York Times to figure it out. Why not be upfront and transparent on Saturday when he was first approached? This story only has legs because the fake news industrial complex is obsessed. Nine months of accusations with zero, zero evidence of anything illegal. On the contrary, the DNC sends its operative onto the soil of a foreign nation, to the embassy of the Ukraine, not to collect dirt, but to actually use it in a coordinated campaign with a foreign right. government. That's what CNN should be covering. But why aren't okay. you? Well, uh, two things on that. First of all, you're avoiding answering the question about Donald Trump's lack of transparency with the beginning. Total but, transparency. So him saying that this meeting was about adoption issues, about his concern for it, orphans? It was. That was it true? was absolutely misrepresented. The individual who requested the meeting. Right, no, no, but that's what he said the meeting was about on Saturday when he knew all along by Saturday that's not what the meeting was about. So that's not being transparent, right? When, when he gave as much information as was necessary to be put out there after the, the it collusion wasn't correct accusations. Information. It wasn't correct it was, information. It was, absolutely. It was about, absolutely. this meeting was about adoption, about all, orphans? All of it was true. All of it was this true. Meeting was somebody about wanted to provide negative information that at the end he of the meeting say that. it was under false pretenses, that it ended up being about adoption. And then, do, we, do you really want to talk? I thought we were going to talk about real issues, like what we're doing with our allies in France. I, I am ISIS. going to ask you, but, but you're but not being honest. How many you're not being up front. Anderson, how many minutes are we in? Are you, are you a TV producer now? You're concerned about how minutes we're going to No, I'm just disappointed you again. Go? You got to go. Into the you got to go. News trap. Okay. You're falling into the fake news trap again, and it's sad, Anderson. Okay. I mean, you're like shiny, you know, you're just like you're, you're shaking shiny objects to try to divert people, but I don't think viewers are really <laughs> no, that, that you're, you're, easily you know, you know why? You know why the president's description of a witch hunt is accurate? Because there never were witches. 
and there never was any collusion. It's okay. bogus. The so DNC. Again, I, I'm just wondering. The DNC you're claiming that Donald Trump involved. Jr. was transparent from the get-go. Donald Trump Jr. is transparent. He didn't. Absolutely. He didn't just release his emails because the Anderson, New York Times. You're like had a broken them. record. Uh, no, because I'm not getting any answers from you. I'm answering you. Every time. No, you're responding. You're actually not answering because you're not actually being a let's, la let's la let the viewers judge who decided that you are now at 13th place in national ratings behind Nick at Night, which is at 11. You used that line on Monday, and you yeah. know it was sort of mildly Tucker amusing Carlson on Monday. Tucker Carlson gets four think... million viewers. You barely scratched right, 800,000. But I think it's funny that you have enough time in the White House, which is apparently you're so busy, you're able to sit around and read Nielsen numbers. Which no, actually, I get I a really good prep from my team because the White House press team is superb. Okay. I don't deal with this stuff because. I, I do have a day job. So last night, Donald Trump Jr. said two contradictory things. First, he <laughs> said that, that people were trying to reach out all the time during the campaign with things like this, information like this, which something many surrogates have said that this happens all the time. And then he also said that no one else at any time during the campaign reached out saying they had information about Hillary Clinton. So which is it? Did it happen all the time or did it never happen? I will return to what the president and Donald Trump Jr. and also Jay Sekulow said that in the heat of the campaign, he took a meeting as a favor to an acquaintance. That meeting was sold to him on false pretenses, and as soon as it was clear that that was the case, it ended. Right, but, I, I, but the surrogates are saying it happened all the time. He said it happened all the time, but then he also said last night, this is the only time it ever happened. I'm just trying to get a straight answer. You'd have to ask him. I didn't okay. run his day planner. Fair enough. Lindsey Graham asked Chris Ray, the president's nominee for FBI director, whether it was appropriate for Donald Trump Jr. to take the meeting, and if he should have alerted the FBI, listen, this is what he said. I just want to play that for our viewers. Well, Captain let me Mueller ask you would... this. If I got a call from somebody saying the Russian government wants to help Lindsey Graham get reelected, they've got dirt on Lindsey Graham's opponent, should I take that meeting? Well, Senator, I would think you'd want to consult with some good legal advisors before you did that. So the answer is, should I call the FBI? I think it would be wise to let You're the FBI You're going to be the director know. of the FBI, pal. So here's what I want you to tell every politician. If you get a call from somebody suggesting that a foreign government wants to help you by disparaging your opponent, tell us all to call the FBI. To the members of this committee, any threat or effort to interfere with our elections from any nation state or any non-state actor is the kind of thing the FBI would want to know. So I'm just wondering, do you believe the president's nominee for the lead of the FBI is, is wrong about that or is right, that this is something that Donald Trump Jr. should have called the FBI about? And as to your claim about, you know, Ukraine involvement uh, with the DNC, which they deny, if, if that happened, that, oh, they no, that, they, happened. that they should call, they should have called the FBI about it. No, they, they actually initiated it. The DNC initiated. Right. That, that, that's where the real story is. When you actually go to another government to coordinate right. I mean, dirt the, yeah. on a political campaign, this isn't something we started. This no, is I, something I know. Look, wasn't, we, we've reported right? so there's on There's a we've massive difference. We've reported you do on know this. the difference, right? We, when you initiate it, we, when you initiate it. Yeah, I understand the word initiate. Good. Yeah, we've actually reported Good. on this. Politico uh, wrote the article, I believe it was back in January. I'll put it mm -hmm. up on the screen. So did, so did CNN. If there, the difference is there's not, as far as we know, an active FBI investigation of any Ukraine involvement. And if, frankly, if there was, I think it would be a much bigger story, and I would love to report on it every single night. But there is an active FBI investigation into Russian collusion in this election and uh, Russian involvement in this election and poss any possible collusion with the campaign. So that's why I think there's a difference in the reporting. But, but then why haven't you dedicated 10 minutes of another segment, which is meant to be about international relations, on that story instead of what you're doing now? Well, uh, what I, I need to do right now is I should take a commercial break, but when I come back, I actually want to ask you about the president's trip to France and also the victory in Mosul, if you're willing to stick around. I'd be delighted. I appreciate that. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back with the president heading to France for Bastille Day. We're talking to White House insider Sebastian Gorka. So what does the president hope to accomplish with this trip to France? Obviously, the president's been critical of France in the past, but it's obviously an incredibly important ally. Uh, absolutely. It's our oldest ally. Uh, so we are delighted that thanks to the 100th anniversary of America's engagement in World War I, uh, 
uh, the President and the United States is being recognized as the guest of honor at this year's Bastille celebrations, the first time an American president has gone to these celebrations in decades. Uh, and we want to reassure everybody, as we did at the G20, as uh, Secretary Mattis and the Vice President have done in recent visits, that we stand by our allies, we stand by Article 5. And we understand, uh, I was with a, a senior French uh, diplomat just minutes before I came here, that we have a very serious common concern, and that's the threat of terror terrorism to France, to the Western civilization that NATO represents. There was other good news for the White House. Uh, the Iraqi government has declared victory over ISIS in, in Mosul this week. Our Nick Payton Walsh has been reporting from inside that city, has had a number of CNN personnel over the course of the battle. It, it is a huge victory, obviously not the end of ISIS at all, but the distrust between Sunnis, Shia, and Kurds that continues and will continue to exist in, uh, inside Iraq, how does that get solved from a political standpoint? Look, it is a massive event, you're right, uh, because this isn't just the second biggest city in, most, in uh, Iraq. It's also the city that, where the uh, ISIS, the Islamic State, declared caliphate in 2014. So when Prime Minister Abadi says the caliphate is now destroyed, he's absolutely right. When it comes to the long-term victory, yes, it's not about kinetics. It's not just about body bags or HVTs of high-value targets being killed. It's about the political end state in Iraq. And I think there's a very simple um, formula here. All of these individuals, whatever clan, whatever religious group you belong to, whatever tribe, there's one simple question. Will your future, the future of your children, your grandchildren, be served by continued fighting, continued sectarian violence, or by Iraq coming back together as a nation. I don't think that's a hard sell logically, maybe emotionally, but that's what we're going to do with our allies, with our partners, is to create an Iraq that functions again as a unitary state. The